Prophet Muhammad says, between my minbar and my tomb, there is a garden that is as praised as the garden of paradise. Hello, I'm Dr. Munya Shekhab Abudaya, Senior Curator at the Museum of Islamic Art in Doha. And today we're here in Gallery 3 of the new Permanent Galleries display dedicated to the religious life in the Islamic world. We have different themes in this gallery, prayer, pilgrimage and funerary practices. This scroll is part of the pilgrimage uh, subsection of the, the gallery, and it is displayed near objects that belong to the pilgrimage journey. This scroll was made in the 15th century, uh, entirely uh, out of different sheets of paper that were combined uh, on this scroll. And uh, what's really interesting is that there's very few scrolls that uh, have survived from that specific period. It has different depictions, uh, the depiction of Mecca um, and the Kaaba, the depiction of Medina, and we'll see later the sandal of the Prophet, Jerusalem and uh, Hebron as well. And then we have at the end the representation of Najaf and Karbala in, uh, in Iraq. Scrolls like these would have belonged to very wealthy owners because not everyone could afford having such an expensive manuscript made for them. This was all handmade. If you think of the amount of gold that was used, uh, the uh, very refined scripts that were used as well in this scroll. If we look at earlier manuscripts and earlier pilgrimage certificates from the 11th to the 13th century, they are made as proxy certificates, which means that they were um, made for sultans or uh, princes that, were, that could not travel to Mecca and Medina. Mecca here has the precinct represented with the arcades and the mosque lamps all around the sanctuary. And then you have the Kaaba in the middle with different sites that are quite important throughout the journey. So you have the Maqam Ibrahim, for example, which is one place where you really should um, pay your salutations to, to Abraham while you are circumambulating around the Kaaba. The black stone, for example, is also represented here. The sandal of the Prophet is believed to have been a relic that was quite important in the medieval period. Within that sandal, you have the inscription here around it that highlights the benefits of interacting with the sandal. The sandal would protect you from fires, from earthquakes, from diseases. It's a venerated relic because it has special powers. This area here above the Prophet's tomb and that part in particular, and here on the Kaaba. If you look closely, you'll see that there are some losses into the paper. This is actual restorations. They were actually used as devotional tools by people who would interact with them, meaning people would be touching and rubbing uh, their fingers or would actually kiss some specific areas of the scroll. What we notice is that the, the losses are following some specific sacred components of the scroll, the Kaaba itself. Then here, this has the Shahada, which is the profession of faith in Islam. It says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The part that is missing is Rasulullah, because one of the venerations of people in the medieval period was really to interact with the Prophet Muhammad as the first uh, Wali Allah. And uh, people would then really believe that they would get the benedictions of the Prophet Muhammad and God by rubbing their fingers and kissing specific parts of, uh, of these kinds of representations. By transparency, you see that this section has been actually removed. The paper was completely ripped out and replaced by another name. So there is another pilgrim's name here that was removed and replaced by this Sayyid Shihab al-Din Mawar al-Nahri from Transoxiana, which is present-day Central Asia. He 
might have reused an earlier scroll that was made for someone else. And maybe he probably didn't go to Mecca, to Medina. Uh, maybe he went to other, the other sites that are represented in the scroll. But to give legitimacy to the actual, the, the, the whole scroll, he needed to have the two holiest sites represented for him. So he replaced the name of the former pilgrim with his name and had his name as well at the very end of the scroll. Think of this scroll as the uh, reminiscence of pilgrimage practices in the medieval period and how very wealthy people would be um, acquiring such important documents after the performance of their uh, pilgrimage. These holy sites would have really an importance uh, for also for artists, for calligraphers, to produce artworks in, in, these, uh, in these places. And so this scroll specifically is displayed to really talk about the journey and what comes after the journey. <laughs>